Hello and welcome to this week's video homework. This is the first video for this new unit that we're starting that's all about organizing living systems. Essentially, we're going to be talking about how animals, and often humans, work. In this video, I'm going to be speaking to you about hierarchy and dependent systems. We're going to be learning about how various parts of the body work and how they work together. The word hierarchy means to rank things from top to bottom. It's just a way that humans organize or describe how things are put together. Humans describe organisms at a few different levels of organization that are in a hierarchy from the top to the bottom or from big to small. At the biggest level, we have an organism. You are an organism, a single tree is an organism. Your dog or cat is a single organism. An organism is made up of an interconnected system of organ systems, such as the digestive system or the circulatory system. Each of those systems is made up of a bunch of organs, such as your heart or your lung or your stomach or your liver. Each of those are organs that work together to make up an organ system. Organs themselves are made up of things we call tissues. Now, tissues are just a bunch of cells that are working together to provide a specific function. In your stomach, you have a lot of different types of tissues that are all layered together and they provide the function of the organ, which is the stomach. Tissues themselves, as I said, are made of cells. So as we get smaller and smaller on this hierarchy, we go from organism to organ system, organs, then smaller tissues, and smaller than that are cells. Each cell will perform some action, and those actions taken together determine what the tissues are doing. And if we wanted to continue down on this hierarchy, below cells would be molecules, and below molecules would be atoms, and so on and so on. It can, you can keep going smaller and smaller in this ranking system of the hierarchy of living organisms. This system that I just described is actually just completely made up by humans. It is scientists' way of describing the systems that make up the body. There are models of how the body works. In this system, each of these levels are made up of smaller and smaller parts. And the big idea that I want you guys to learn here is that function depends on the smaller parts. So the function of an organ, like the heart, depends on the smaller parts, the tissues that are in the heart. Each of these systems, as we describe over here, are made up of smaller parts, and it's the interaction of those parts that allow each of the systems to work up to the organism level. The reason you work is because molecules are working together to make up cells, which work together to make up tissues, which work together to make up organs, and organ systems which work together to make you function. One of our assignments in class over the next couple weeks will be for you to be given some function. You need to be able to describe how that job is performed by interacting parts working together, such as how does your body digest food? You will need to be able to describe how the small intestines and the stomach and the liver all interact together in order to digest your food. So before we get to that, we should learn about what some of those body systems are. One of the most obvious that you see on most people is skin. Skin protects the inside of your body. It's just really there to prevent water from getting out and too much water from getting in. It prevents pathogens like bacteria and viruses from getting in and it also helps to regulate your temperature. Your skin is just a giant protector. It has layers of different tissues within it. Fat tissues keep you warm. It has glandular tissues, which allow you to sweat, which keep you cool, and various other nerves and blood vessels that allow you to interact with the world around you. Another body system are your muscles. 
They are made up of muscle tissue, tendons, and ligaments. All of these things work together to provide movement. The only reason you can move is because of muscles. But another function of muscles is to help keep you warm. As your muscles use energy, they produce heat. This is why you shiver when you're cold, because it produces heat so you can stay warm. But muscles use up a lot of oxygen, and so you must have other body parts that work to provide your muscles with oxygen. Next up, we have the circulatory system. It provides blood to all the parts of your body. The circulatory system is made up of the blood, the arteries and veins that contain the blood, and your heart. All of these things work together to move all the nutrients around in your blood to the various body parts. It allows you to take oxygen and sugar, water, and hormones to all your body parts, while also taking away the bad stuff like carbon dioxide, urea, bacteria, and other wastes, your blood and your circulatory system gets rid of those things. Next up, we have the digestive system. Your digestive system has the primary function of breaking down all of the nutrients that you consume and making them small enough so they can enter your bloodstream. Your digestive system mostly brings in all of the nutrients. It helps to regulate all the chemicals that are necessary in our body. The respiratory system is mostly made of the mouth and nose, the trachea, which is the tube that goes down here, your lungs, and then a broad muscle called the diaphragm. That diaphragm does the pulling on your lungs, and the purpose of your respiratory system is to bring in oxygen into your lungs so that oxygen can diffuse into your blood, and then it also pushes out the carbon dioxide, which has dissolved back into your lungs from your blood. Next is the excretory system. The excretory system exits stuff. It filters wastes and gets rid of anything that your body doesn't need. It also helps to regulate how much water is in your body. If you drink too much water, the organ called the kidneys helps to process and pump out into your bladder, all of the excess water that you can then pee out. And so your excretory system gets rid of all the excess water, as well as all the excess wastes that might be forming inside of your blood. And it turns out these systems don't just apply to animals, they apply to plants as well. Plants have bodies and they have systems of organs and tissues just like we do. And finally, I wanna to talk to you about the nervous system. In animals, the nervous system controls and coordinates all of those other systems. It's made up of your brain, your nerves, but also a bunch of hormones that control and regulate the functions of all the other body parts. All of these systems that we've mentioned work together. And as I talked about dependent systems before, all of those systems are when things work together, they make up a system. And so you are a living system. And in science, when we study these systems, we try to define what is part of the system and what is not. Sometimes the body doesn't work in a way that perfectly fits our model of these systems. Therefore, we try to do experiments in order to help define what each of the body parts does to the best of our ability. So to review the hierarchy, we start at the organism level. An organism is made up of a bunch of organ systems. Organ systems are made up of organs. Organs are made up of tissues. And tissues are just a collection of cells that all do a specific job. Each system is made up of smaller parts. And a key concept in this unit is that structure determines function. By that, I mean the shape of a part determines what job it can do. For example, the shape of your arteries and veins, that tube shape, that straw shape, allows blood to pass through it. Also, those arteries and veins are flexible their shape 
allows them to stretch out and can and squeeze together that allows the blood to flow through your arteries and for your body to control where blood goes squeeze an artery and you have less blood going there stretch an artery out and you have more blood going there the structure of your veins and arteries determines its function which is to allow blood to flow throughout your body. All of your body systems, all the way down to the atomic level, the structure of each part determines what properties, what characteristics, what jobs it can do. So let's take a look at one example of some body function. Let's look at temperature regulation. For humans, you must stay at around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Your body must keep you at this right temperature. And this image over here is a model that describes how your body functions to keep you at the right temperature. What happens when you get too warm? Well, your skin has a bunch of pores in it. Each of these pores are made up of a bunch of cells. The cells produce the function of making sweat and then the tissue, which is the pore, squeezes that sweat out to the surface of your skin. Another function is that the arteries and veins stretch wide, which increases blood flow to the surface of your skin. That's why you become red when you're too warm, because there's extra blood flowing under your skin. And then as the sweat evaporates, it takes heat away from your body and it cools off your body, which can return through the veins back into the insides of your body. What happens when you're too cold? Well, then you work with some other body systems. Your arteries will squeeze together to prevent blood to flow towards the outside of your body where you're losing heat, and it conserves the blood inside your core, which keeps you warmer in your vital organs in your brain and then your muscles will start to shiver your muscles will pull and stretch back and forth which generates heat it's the interaction of your muscles your veins and arteries and your skin that allow you to regulate your temperature okay so a quick review here of the structure and function in this hierarchy if we start at cells those cells make and release sweat. Or if you're too cold, the muscle cells squeeze together. At the tissue level, the function of the tissue level, those glands store sweat. Your veins and arteries allow blood to flow. The tissue of your muscles pull on tendons and bones to help move your body. At the organ level, your skin is an organ which prevents too much water from getting out and also helps you to release heat if you have too much heat. If you're too cold, your skeletal muscles shake back and forth, which provides movement and therefore heat. The organ system level, that would be the interaction of your skin, muscles, and circulatory system, which all work together to maintain the proper temperature. The end result, the end function, is at the organism level, you. And the function is, you don't die because you're too cold or too hot. So I hope that all makes sense. In class, we're gonna be working on describing some of these functions and then being able to identify which body parts work together to produce that function. You're gonna be creating a model that describes how that function is produced. And once you have that model, we're gonna be designing investigations to test whether or not your models are correct. We're going to be doing experiments that you create in order to test whether or not your model is accurate or if your model needs to be revised. So if you have any questions, always please feel free to ask. I'll leave you with a song, a jazz tune, because it's Jazz November, and I will see you in class.